Well, I want to welcome you to a, another session of Grace for Today. I'm Pastor Lee Cruz of the Grace Bible Church in Winchester, uh, Kentucky. Uh, and uh, we bring these uh, blogs to you so that, uh, for especially for our own people in our church, uh, their teachings and some of the things that, that we believe and what we really believe that the Bible teaches, and so we hope that we can bless you in all this. Uh, well, I want to today uh, just talk to you about what it means to believe and, and what faith is, and so if I can, uh, before I get into this, let's, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, well, Father, I pray that you would be with our listeners and those that are watching us even right now. I pray that you'd be with our church. And Lord, may we stand in this day. Lord, there are so many things that are coming against the church and against us today. And Lord, so, someone has said that the path in Christianity has become narrower and narrower. And our Lord told us that, that uh, broad is the way that leads to destruction, but narrow is the way that leads to that eternal life in the kingdom of God. And I, I believe that we're saved by grace, Father. I thank you that you have made it so easy for us to come and be saved. But Lord, to live the life that you want us to live is not an easy way. If we, But we need to just trust you with all of our heart, all of our soul, lean not into our understanding. Jesus told us once that without me you can do nothing, and I pray that we within this congregation would realize that that we need to trust him and walk with him in every area of our life. And I ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, what does it mean to believe? We, hear a, we use a lot of Christianese. We use a lot of jargon. And those people that have, are outside the church, uh, they don't understand what we are saying. Uh, the Bible teaches us over in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 that the natural man, well, who's the natural man? The natural man is that person who has never come <coughs> to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. They've never been born again. And until the Spirit of God, I've, I've had people come and tell me, well, I've read the Bible, and it's nothing, you know, whatever. Well, well, you can read it all you want. A natural man can read it with natural eyes and not get one thing out of it. It is only when the Spirit of God comes alive in you that as a result of that, that the Word of God becomes alive. This book is living but it must be connected to the Holy Spirit in order for you to comprehend and for you to understand it. Because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 that the natural man, the person never been saved, receives not the Spirit of God, for they're spiritually discerned. Neither can he know them. That's what it says. But the Bible also says that he, the spiritual, judges all things. And so he judges all things by the, what the Holy Spirit is telling inside. We're to live by the Spirit of God. The Bible teaches us in the book of Thessalonians that we're body, soul, and we're spirit. And what God wants us to do through the Word of God, he wants us to discern whether or not it's us wanting something or whether it's the Spirit of God that wants something. And once the Spirit of God comes alive, and then, then God wants us to control our body and our soul, which our soul is made up of three things, our intellect, uh, it's our decision-making, and, and, uh, and our emotions, that's our soul. Well, he wants us to be able to have that in control, and even the body, which is our five senses, he wants all that to be controlled by the Spirit of God, and then we won't get in trouble. So what, <clears throat> what does it mean to believe? Well, the Bible says, and we all know this verse in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Well, you say, well, that's simple. Well, it is simple. And Paul one time wrote that he did not want us to be taken away from the simplicity that's in Jesus Christ. We're the ones that make it hard. I believe the Bible says in, in uh, Romans 10 and verse 13, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord will be saved. It says in 10, 9, that if we confess Christ as Lord and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. What does it mean to believe? Well, the first thing I think anybody has to come to the place they understand of who they are is they understand that they have a depraved nature, that we've failed, that we've sinned. Romans 3, 23 says that we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Paul wrote in the seventh chapter of the book of Romans, within me, within my flesh, there dwelleth no good thing. He even goes on to say this, O wretched man that I am, he asks a question then, who shall deliver me from this body 
of blood guiltiness. And then he gives us the answer. The answer, I thank God through Jesus Christ. That's it. Why? Because in, in Romans 8, verse 1, it says, There is therefore now no more condemnation to those in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Once we come to Christ, our, our natures, our, na our old nature doesn't go away, but God puts his spirit in there, and the Bible says in the book of Galatians that now we've got this warfare and this conflict within our lives. Well, who wins? Well, the one that you put the emphasis on, the one that you listen to. And if you listen to the flesh again, you're going to be defeated by the flesh. But if you listen to what the spirit of God says to you, and you walk in the Spirit, the Bible says in Galatians that if we walk in the Spirit, we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. So what does it mean to believe? Well, to believe means to have a confident conviction of, of these things. But it, there's three things that must take place in order for you to believe. Number one, you have to have knowledge. The Bible teaches us simply that uh, how should they believe if, if, a, if a preacher doesn't come? Uh, he says, faith, the Bible tells us about faith. It says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So our faith is never a blind leap into oblivion, but our faith is always a leap into what the word of God says. So the first thing you have to have when you believe is you have to have knowledge. Second thing is you have to have a conviction in your heart that what you're reading and what you believe in is absolutely, totally true. The more I study the Word, do I ever have doubts? Oh, sure I have doubts. But the more I study the Word and the more I give those things over to the Lord, the more those doubts disappear. And the Word of God begins to mean everything in the world to me because it teaches me that it's true. I know there, there are many people out there that have tried to disprove the Word of God. And every time they have tried to do it, they end up failing absolutely, totally. Because the word of God is his word, it is truth, it is life, it is power, that's what it is. And so we've got to have knowledge, we've got to have conviction that it's true. And finally, you know, you got to have trust. I can look at a chair all I want to and say, I believe that chair will, will hold me up. But how I demonstrate that I really believe that is to finally sit in it and to see that that chair holds me up. There must come, there must come a time in your life when you commit, when you commit your life to Jesus and surrender to him. Maybe, you know, I, I meet a lot of people say, well, I believe in God. No, that's fine. What God do you believe in? Do you believe in the God of Jesus Christ? Do you believe in the, the God of Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Do you believe that? I believe if you believe in, you just say, well, I believe in God, you're not going to have any problem with what's earth. But the moment in this world that you tell people that you believe in, well, what God do you, I believe in the, God the Father, the Father of Jesus Christ, the only way to heaven, because he said, I'm the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. Once you announce that, I guarantee you, you're going to have some headaches because people don't like it. The world doesn't like it because the God of this age wants them not to like it. So there's three things I must have. I must have knowledge. I must have conviction. And I must have trust. Well, the Bible also says in 1 John chapter 5, now people say, well, can you really know? Well, listen to what it says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 13. It says, these things have been written unto you who believe on the name of the Son of God in order that you may have eternal life. That's what he wants you to do. So God wants you to know. I've always said that if I was standing somewhere and someone came up to my children and they said to them, who's your dad? And they would look at him and say, well, we really don't know. Whatever, you know, that would bother me. Well, I'd probably slap the fire out of him. But, but the whole point of it is, I want them to be able to say, that's my dad standing there. You know what, God the Father, who is greater than all, and the Bible says, if you being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give good things to those that ask? He wants you to know that you're his. And he wants other people to know that you are his. The conviction of that. And you have, ought to have that. The Bible talks about in Romans 8, I think it's verse 16, that it says that his spirit bears witness with our spirit that we're his. his. You know, Paul one time wrote over in Philippians 3.10 that I might know him and the power of the resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering even unto death. That's what he said, man. And so I really believe with all my heart God wants you to know and you can know that. Now, to believe means to have what? It means to have a confident conviction 
uh, that three things are happening in your life. This is what it means to believe. Number one is to believe he who is in, uh, he who who the uh, is he is who the Bible says he is. That's what it means that he, he who says he is. Uh, and 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 then here's the second thing that he will do what he said he will do. And the third thing is, and upon placing my trust in him, I enter into a personal, eternal relationship with him. That's what it means. Three things. So what's the first one? The first one means to believe. It means he who the he is who the Bible says he is. And I found that to be absolutely, totally true. Second thing is what? That he will do what he said he will do. And I've also found that to be true. And what's the third thing? The third thing is upon placing my trust in, in him or Jesus Christ, I enter into a personal, eternal relationship with him. The, the, the walking with the Lord, Christianity is not a, a thing of rules and regulations. It's a relationship between you and the Lord. That's what it is. That's what it is. Now, what we have to do, we have to learn how to walk by faith because the Bible tells us without faith it's impossible to please God. Well, what does faith mean? Well, when we faith, faith is always based upon this on this word because what does faith say? Faith says to us basically this. It says that that simply uh, faith is is that uh, that Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So faith is always what God has said. In these last days, he says he spoke to his son. The Bible says also in the third uh, verse of chapter 1 of Hebrews, it says that uh, he, he upholds all things by the power of his word. So what, how is God going to speak to us? He's going to speak to us through this book. That's what he's going to do. So what is real faith? Well, the, the Bible tells us over in chapter 11 of the book of Hebrews, verse 1, that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. The substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So what is the, so let me ask you this question. So then what is the substance of things hoped for? Well, when I pray about something and I've asked the Lord to hear me, then here I've asked, okay? So is, so what, I, and, and so until the time that I ask, until the time that what my prayer is asked for is revealed to me and God answers that prayer, then as a result of that, uh, what do I put in the middle here? Do I keep on that begging God, begging God? No, I don't think so. I think once I ask him, I come to him, and, I, and I, once I come to him and I ask him, I come back to him and thanking him and praising him and saying to him, Lord, thank you for hearing me, and Lord, I'm walking with you. Show me how to walk with you in this way. And you know, sometimes if you read scripture, it tells us that whatever we ask that is the will of God, it is as absolutely totally answered. And I may start off asking God for something way over here, you know, way over here. And here's God's will over here. But the more I get in tune with him, the more I do that, the more my will needs to line up with his will. And as I do that, things begin to happen in my life. Well, it tells me over in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, Be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might be able to prove what is a good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. And that's how you prove it, by lining up with the Word of God, saturating your body with the, with the Word of God so the Holy Spirit can raise it up and show you what to do. So faith is the substance of things hoped so. What is the su substance? It means it has substance to it. What is the substance? It's the Word of God. So the, the time I ask until the time that I get the answer, what do I put in the middle? I put in the middle of the Word of God. The Bible teaches me in the book of Hebrews also that the Word of God becomes my anchor in the middle of that. It's the anchor in the middle of my storm. I'm asking, I'm hanging on, and I keep, keep. Uh, God tells us to pray His Word back to Him, to tell us what He thinks, to tell, remind me of His Word. And so I'm doing that in time. So it's it's not just, okay, I just hope, 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 and hope it happens, happens, just roll the dice. No, that's not it at all. I go to the Word of God. And I put the word of God in me. So it has sub faith is the substance of things hoped for. So my faith is always based upon the word of God. Then it says of the, e the evidence of things not seen. You know, the substance is for you and I. God gives us the word to help us during those times as we're praying and asking for something. Well, then what is the evidence? God, the evidence is for God. God's looking for evidence in your life and my life as to whether or not that we are really believing him. Do we believe him? 
Because the Bible also says in Hebrews 11, verse 6, it says, They that come to God must believe that he is God. But listen to the rest of this. And the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So I've got to believe that he, he, that he hears me. But i got to really believe he wants to answer that prayer. And he does. So the faith is the substance. That's the word of God. The evidence God's looking to see whether or not you really believe him, whether or not you've got faith, because without faith, it's impossible to please him. And, and many times you read in the Bible where Jesus said these words, oh, ye of little faith. And, and one place that is a sad place, it says that Jesus could not do very many miracles. Why? Because they had little faith. So I'm just simply saying to you, what it means to believe is reality. It believes that uh, God, and one of these days, he's going to show us how we believe and trust in him and walk with him and I believe the more I do that, the more, and I want his spirit to bear witness with I, that I'm his. I don't know what I would do without that. I got to have him telling me, Lee, you're mine, you're mine, you're mine. And maybe you're going through some tough times right now. And maybe, you know, you're having a hard time with everything that's happened around you, believe it. Oh, I'm telling you, friend, I wish I could do it for you, but I can't. But here's what I tell you to do. Get alone with him. Pour out your heart to him. Tell him how you really feel. It was stupid to go in there and not say what you really feel because he already knows what you're thinking. He already knows what you have need of even before you ask. So go ask him. Go talk to him. Tell him what you really need. Pour out your heart to him. Oh, how wonderful it is. You know, we sing that old hymn, Sweet Hour of Prayer. That's what you need. You need that sweet hour. Oh, and, and he it calls you away. Don't carry that burden. Jesus tells us, come to me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Are you carrying heavy burdens? That's not from Jesus because his burdens are light. Let's pray. Well, Father, thank you for today, and I pray that this will be a blessing into somebody. And so, Lord, be with us, I pray. God bless those out there. Be with those that have are sick and ill with maybe coronavirus or whatever it may be. And, Lord, I pray uplifting, and I pray for them, Father, and I pray for healing. And I claim for them what it says in 3 John, verse 2. My beloved, I wish above all things that thou would prosper and be in health, even as I so prosper. Bless, I pray, Father, in this day. And I ask all this in the mighty name of Jesus and for his sake. Amen. God bless you.